Welcome to LifeWords Day by Day. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 say this, As he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Wouldn't you have loved to have been a fly on the wall when Joseph and Mary sat down for the first time after Joseph's dream? Mary, you're not going to believe what happened to me last night. And as they listened to each other's stories, because Mary had received an angelic visitor as well, their eyes grow big and fill with tears as they realize what is unfolding in their lives. Mary, we have to name him Jesus because he's going to be a savior. Would he command thousands of soldiers in order to rescue the Jews from the Romans? Would he be a political revolutionary? Just how would Jesus be a savior? Now, don't miss the significance of the words that come next in this description of Jesus. It says that he will save his people from their sins. Those last three words, from their sins, would send shockwaves through the original audience. They had longed for hundreds of years for a savior. They were anxiously awaiting someone to rise up and deliver them from the clutches and oppression of the Romans. You see, in their minds, what they needed to be saved from was something outside of themselves, other people's evil, other people's oppression upon them. But this Jesus would save them from themselves. He would save them from their sins and knowing that purpose of Jesus gave them pause and it should give us pause as well. It should give us pause because we are much like the Jews in thinking that the problem with our lives always exists outside of us. If this house was better, if they would stop that or fix that, if I had these friends, if she would just do this, if I could just purchase that, then I would be happy and rescued and all of life would be great. But you know that's not true because you've been chasing those things all of your life. You have tried the change of the exterior, but it does not quiet the soul. The primary task of Jesus coming to the earth was to deliver his people from the bondage of their sin. He will save his people from their sin. We need a Savior who can cure us from the curse of sin, who can deliver us from the wages of sin, who can deliver us from the power of sin, and who can save us from sin. And that someone. It's not you, it's not me. Jesus saves his people from their sins because Jesus takes the consequences of our sins upon himself. He is sacrificed on his people's behalf. He receives the punishment that they, that we deserve. And it is an acceptable sacrifice to God because Jesus was pure and perfect and had no sin of his own. And this is the transaction that takes place. When a person confesses their sinfulness, admits their guilt, and receives by faith the work of Jesus' life and death and resurrection, then they are saved from their sins. Jesus' death for sin becomes effectual for them. They will not face the eternal consequences of their sins. Those sins were judged and punished in Jesus Christ on the cross. They are pulled from the prison of sin and they are released to walk and to live with God in the new life granted to them by God. This is what it means to be saved from our sins. As you pray today, please remember Aodu Rodriguez and his family our national change makers in the Cape Verde Islands. And also remember the French Haitian Life Word broadcast that's heard throughout Haiti.